Morning everyone, so it's the uh, start of a new week of framing in the barn. I thought I'd just show you around here quickly because I haven't done any filming around here because we're away in the barn. So I thought I'd show you the lambs and stuff. Um, I've also uh, taken down the temporary structure, temporary building. I did that last weekend. I didn't film it, I just knocked it down. Um, so I'll show you that as well. Yeah, just show you a bit around and then we'll go over to the, to the barn for another week of framing. Uh, on, while I'm on the way over there in the video, I shall put up the CAD model just so you can see what we're working on. When it's all laid flat, it's kind of difficult to tell what's going on. Uh, so we'll have a look at the CAD model and then it's uh, another week of uh, timber framing. So yeah, temporary buildings down. Managed to pull that down. A uh, bit of time wasted, but you know, all the materials are still there ready to use. They're going back in the uh, stud walls. And lambing's still happening. So this lovely you gave birth to this beautiful lamb didn't you lovely big lamb it's so big we did have to uh give a bit of assistance but you are a lovely lamb aren't you you lamb so i think she's a keeper i think we're gonna keep her you're beautiful aren't you good mum so yeah once the weather improves they'll be out on a bit of ground but look what it's like at the minute got three more sheep in here waiting to uh to lamb I don't think that one's in, Lamb. I think we should get two more, hopefully. They're about to go and land in my pond. Canadian geese. There we go. They just landed. Yeah, I thought I'd quickly show you the uh, wood situation. We're running out of timbers. We haven't got enough to finish it. And this is what I've got left to mill. It's just a muddy, sloppy, wintry puddle. We've got that, but it's all too small and twisted or ring shook. And all of the timbers that are milled are already down the barn. So I'm going to run out. So I've got another load of wood coming. Um, that's going to be to finish it. I've got to do more purlins, got to do posts, a few more posts, a few more mid rails, a few more truss timbers, and then all the cladding, the uh, stud walling, all that kind of good stuff. So there's a lot of timber left to mill. It's because everything's gone from here other than the purlins. Look. So yeah, let's go over to the barn and uh, get this framing done. Probably got like two weeks left of framing, something like that. Um, See, so yeah, a little bit more framing videos and then I'm going to have a little bit of a break from framing to do a bit of milling and stuff to get prepared for some floor beam timbers and stuff like that. And then we'll put the frame up and uh, try and get the roof on and stuff. And then after that, I've got this uh, really cool hydroelectric project uh, booked in. Going to be doing a water wheel for an old mill. I've got the CAD model, it's all designed and everything ready to go, so we're going to be doing that as well. So that'll be a bit of a break from building then. And then once that's done, I'm going to get back onto the barn to try and get a bit of cladding done, maybe the top floor in, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to be really busy. But uh, for this week and the week after, I just need to concentrate on getting that frame done. And so it's just back and forward to the barn, and then there's just going to be a lot more milling. So yeah, but I thought it'd be nice just seeing as we're uh, basically entirely just filming away from here. I thought it'd be nice to just show a little bit around the place and have a little catch up. Yeah, over to the barn and time for another week of framing. So I thought we'd quickly just go over the model while we're on our way over to the barn. So in the first video we did this wall frame here with the uh, mortise and tenon mid rail, the short side that's up on the higher plinth. In the second video we did wall frame two and wall frame three that go from ground all the way to the top and in this video we're going to do a cross frame so it's this cross section um, we're not going to do this part we're going to do this part separately or maybe not even at the barn i might do that here and we're not going to put this part on because there's no need to because it's just bird's mouth uh, like a roof timber in so we're going to do the truss here uh, make all the beaks that attach it to the wall plate and all of these floor joist timbers. There's an interesting bit of joinery going on in here, which we'll see, and the braces. So we've got five of those to do now. So hopefully just another week or two's uh, framing and we'll be at a position where we can leave the barn and come back here and do the rest of it on site. Maybe even get the thing up. Right, good morning everyone. So it's a damp and miserable Monday, bank holiday Monday morning. We've got a bit of a skeleton crew here today, just me, Howard and I. We've just packed away the uh, other wall frames that we did and we're just starting to figure out what we can do with the cross frames. Okay, so we boys... <sighs> Jump around. Right, where 
So the uh, cross frame work has started, so we've got it laid out yesterday, I was a bit slack with filming yesterday, but um, Steve's about to start cutting out tenons for them, Howard is on the mortises, Howard what's the uh, type of uh, mortise called that we're doing with the uh, slanted face? What do you call it? Squinted, Squinted shoulder or it will yeah. be something along those lines. Essentially with um with timber framing if you if you just have a te a, a, a tenon going into a mortise you end up with your bearing point only being the tenon so with this with this little step the timber's actually sitting on a, its whole diameter but then if you take that whole diameter all the way up to the top you end up with this failure point where you've interrupted the grain so they go from a step down to nothing and so that's still got the step but you're taking the minimal amount of wood out so that's what we're doing here because this is a floor and it's load bearing it's got this uh, this step so here's an example of it now how i just started cutting this one out um, so we've been having a bit of a pontificate about this joining here Pontificate. pontification nice work. <laughs> and uh, because we're chopping a bit out with these um what are we calling them Howl's squinted Howl's squinted joinery so we're cutting a bit out of the posts and um, as a result we actually changed it so they're not just going to be tenoned in there we're going to put them on a spline so this is going to go all the way through there and then the two floor timbers are going to rest on it so this becomes their tenon then and then the weight of them sits mostly on these shoulders so that's that ledge that the floor timber is going to sit on what are you up to then, Noi? I'm doing the datum lines on the PR and other pieces for the truss layer. So yeah, so he's working on putting these centre lines, dataming lines for this truss. Um, so Howard's currently working on this joint here with that squinted uh, step joint. And then there's going to be that piece of oak between there acting as a spline and Steve's working on this piece here and I am making braces again and filming. What's that you're cutting out, Steve? This is for the spline, the oak spline going in here, through the post and into the next beam as well. So, cool. So yeah. So that spline's going to go all the way through there that I was just cut out and into that slot that Steve's working on and then the weight of the timber sit on this edge or the weight of the floor rather that's that angled shoulder so not only do we have this really thick floor beam it's 250 mil but because this is now at an angle it also means it's got a longer shoulder which helps with racking it's like too short because we've got you know at the other end we're always like ah too long to So when we 
change the brace angle, we end up with a little bit of a, uh, a clash situation here. So the brace, uh, the bottom of the brace comes to here somewhere, and it was going to clash with this mortise. So we stepped the mortise, and then we put a haunch on the tenon. So essentially, like as when you're doing a door, just a locator haunch. So yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one for a timber frame. A bit unusual, but it gets us around this problem of uh, taking the material out from under the brace. Right, so that's the last of the braces needed for this uh, uh, cross frame. Just stacking them up here because it's the most out of the way place and closest to where we're going to need them. So we're going to want them after lunch basically. <laughs> Just about. So Steve and Howard have just been squaring all this off and getting all the uh, trigonometry right. Um, so now, once now that's all set, they can see how the joints are sitting. Um, they're sitting pretty good, as you can see. I've just finished making the last brace that we need for this section. And uh, so now it's lunch, and then we'll probably. Uh, start fitting braces up to these. Just about to leave for another day at the barn and we've got a uh, a ewe who's imminent. She's showing all the characteristics of a, of a sheep that's about to give birth. Uh, uh, she's stepping around, she's agitated, she's uh, putting her nose up in the air and she's got a bit of snot hanging off her tail so I think her water's broken. So yeah, she's it's your little lambing lookout is it dear? <laughs> Sitting with your mates, with your lambing lookout. Yeah. All right, can I join? Is that yeah, for me? That's yours. Oh, did you see it come out? Well, she, it was more drippy stuff coming out. And that sheep's in the way now. I can't see. You can't see. I've got a view from here. It's better than the cinema, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> better company. I don't want to get too close to spook her or anything, but we got contractions. See that? Hopefully she does it all on her own because uh, sets them back a bit if you have to go and help out. Right, unfortunately, gonna have to go and intervene because she's been about half an hour pushing. She can't get it out. You can see the back, two back legs, but she can't squeeze the head out. So I'm gonna go and help. But I shan't film it because I'll probably get banned from the video or something <laughs> for gruesomeness. So yeah. See when the little lamb's out. It's a pretty good bit of action for uh, just before going and working on timber framing to, to pull, pull, pull the little uh, little lamb out. Beautiful little lamb. But it's all going off this morning. Got geese in the pond, but geese everywhere, lambing. They're just trying to get off to work. <laughs> Beautiful little lamb up on its feet. What is that? Ten, 10 minutes, not even. Up on its feet. Gonna have a suckle in a minute. Let, hopefully. There's no more in there, but she's got a huge bag of milk there and the afterbirth's coming out, so yeah, what a beautiful little lamb, little ewe lamb. So she might be a keeper, that one. Actually quite a big lamb, really. Yeah, good mum. All right, that was a bit of excitement before work. So yeah, off to the barn, timber framing.
We're in the middle of a bit of a storm here in Wales at the moment. And uh, so it's really dark in here, unfortunately, today. I've ended up doing all the braces because um, I've done other stuff as well, as you've seen in the videos, but it just works out well with me having to keep an eye on everything that needs filming and keep going over the model and the plans and stuff. The braces is something I can dip in and out of without slowing anyone down. All right, brace time. Little braces. They look like lovely braces. I wonder who did them. <laughs> Nice. Poor Nye's having to do it on his own because I'm trying to film it. <laughs> Sorry Nye. It's alright man. Alright, first fit up. We're going to plan. A few little tweaks. Won't be long though. What are you up to Steve? So I'm marking the principal rafters yeah. to fit on the first truss. So these will be the tenons, right? Yeah, that's right. This is the top into the king post here. Yep. And then we'll be scribing the collar down to where they'll meet the posts. Cool. Yeah. So do those get squared off they across will, there? Yeah, yeah, they get squared off. Yeah. Um, just at that point. Yeah, there, yeah. So. There is something going on with that. Right, hey everyone, new day and uh, yesterday we got all these braces and everything cut out and in place and the boys got the uh, truss done, Steve and I are working on that and uh, we just laid it over because there's another couple of braces got on that, get a better view for you. So 
it, me and Nye are just getting some timbers ready to start the next truss. And then uh, once we've got all these two braces cut out and these uh, little beak cuts cut, then this frame will be packed away then. And we'll start another frame today because this won't take long now to do this. Yeah, we're coming along. So we're just figuring out some uh, beak cuts to the ends of these. How we're going to get housed them in the top plate and putting on the purlins, that's what we should do for the beaks and how they house into the top plate. So now we're just going to add on the purlin measurements. Yes, yeah, so that one. And then the next one is 1020 from that face. So this inside way. to inside, 1020. From that face down. 1020. What are you up to now? I'm marking up the housing for the purlins. Yeah. In the principal rafters. We can do curve cut them. Curve cut them and yeah. then feed them up then. Yeah. yeah. Good man. So yeah, these are what the uh, purlins sit on. So the pieces that go across the roof, which is showing you on the drawing. And um, then my sheet roofing screws to them. So Steve and Howard have just taken apart this truss. And Steve's going to put the tenon in the end of that post that goes into the bottom of the truss. Uh, put it back together and then mark out where the braces go. Yeah, it's coming together.
So just to help orientate what we're looking at, we're currently looking at the back side of the back cross frame. That's what this one is. And it's the one with the intricate bits on the ends because we've got all the braces and everything. I think you'll agree it's a pretty pleasing shape. Obviously it's going to have that um, angled timber on the end of it and then it's got the lean to on the side of that as well. So it's not complete but it gives an idea of what it's going to look like and some scale to it. And I think you'll agree that looks pretty cool. I'm so pleased with it. It's such a pleasing design and shape and uh, the guys have done excellent work, working really well and it's just coming out so I mean, yeah, it's just lovely. There's nothing more you can say about it, really. The shapes, curves, the joinery, it's just a, a work of art, really. You happy with how it's going, Howard? Yeah, it's all looking good. Looking good, eh? So, yeah, should speed up a little bit. That one took quite a while because of all the little uh, intricacies involved in it, getting all the beaks lined up with the top plates and the braces and everything, but they'll go a bit quick enough. Yeah. Conclude, conclude the video. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.